We should never be seen in the daylight. That's what I think. Reigning for nearly three decades as the most well-respected thrash band in the history of the genre, Slayer has pretty much seen and done it all. So when I was offered the opportunity to pick the brain of legendary Slayer guitarist Kerry King, I obviously had no problem calling up Kenny G's agent and telling him he'd have to wait. This is what the King had to say on a lot of different subjects before his show in Winnipeg at the Unholy Alliance Tour. The high points come and then the high points go. Like, I think we, the first time we peaked, we peaked about 90, 91, 92, something like that. And then I guess that was when grunge picked up or the, um, actually it was when um, Offspring Green Day popped up. And you know, metal wasn't like frowned upon, but it wasn't like in your face like it was in. And now, I think we're bigger now than we were in 1991, so it's been like a roller coaster ride, you know, you just ride the waves of popularity and have fun with it. Do you find a lot of the same types of people that were out at your shows, you know, back even in the 80s, still coming out today? I think it's both because um, some people feel they outgrow it. Um, and then the, old, the ones that don't, you know, they've either got younger brothers or kids of their own and they bring their own kids. So it's a, it's a regenerating fan base, which is really good for us. And it's cool to look out there and see people that you know were there the first time we ever came through. And then you see somebody like, that's probably their first Slayer show. What about the hardcore fans? Because you guys notoriously have some of the some of the craziest, most diehard fans of any genre of music, of any band. Um, does it sometimes freak you out what some people do to show their dedication to Slayer? Every once in a while, you know, you get the the one that's really like ready for the funny farm, you know. <laughs> but um, you know, I was like that when I was a kid into the bands I liked. I want to thank you very much for coming. I get it all the time. I mean, I wouldn't have redecorated myself to look so unique if I had a problem with it mm -hmm. um, because I kind of stand out in a room. So, you know, if I said, ah, leave me alone, you know, what kind of would I be? <laughs> I think me and Tom are probably the better two at it. Um, Dave just doesn't, he doesn't do well in crowds, you know, he's just, he's one of those guys that he just, I guess he's got anxiety about being surrounded by too many people, I don't know. The last time we parted ways in 1991, whatever it was, it was just time to move on for both of us, I think. And, you know, it came upon us where we needed a drummer again in, uh, like three, four years ago. And uh, Jeff brought up, you know, I think we should get Dave. And I said, well, if anybody deserves a shot, Dave deserves a shot. So, you know, we play with him and, you know, to this day, he's still the best musician in the band. It's, it's just, it's good to have him. Well, that was just a payday. <laughs> I mean, that was just I was just playing a lead for like ten minutes in the studio that was right down the hallway. You know, it's not like I go on tour with other bands or anything. Yeah. Um, How'd that come about? The BC Boys. Thing? Yeah. We were recording Rain and Blood, and they were down the hall recording License to Ill, and Rick Rubin was doing both of them. It's really all I did. I went, okay. You know, I wasn't happy. I wasn't excited. I wasn't mad about it. It was just one of those things. Yeah, no doubt. Are you a fan of hip-hop? Because you ended up on the Judgment Night soundtrack as well. How did that go? Well, I'm really not a fan of hip-hop. No offense to hip-hop. Just not my, it's not my little bowl of dessert. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I don't believe in religion anyway. Right. So if I did... I'd be a big hypocrite, you know, like, I can't say Satan exists and God doesn't or vice versa. Um, I don't believe in God, therefore I can't believe in Satan. We were in Milwaukee two days ago, and somebody comes up and says, you see the, the Bible thumpers, you know, handing out stuff in the front? I'm like, no, is anybody videoing them? <laughs> I want to see. An actual priest, the uh, radio evangelist, came out and interviewed us, and we'd sit there and listen to everything he had to say all day. It's like, okay, well, since you believe that, why can't this exist? And he's like, no, that's not possible. I said, why not? That's just not possible. It's brainwashing, man. It's amazing. And they won't, will say, hey, we'll listen to what you got to say. How about if I throw this your way? No. He's just adamant that there is no other way. It's amazing. The biggest thing I could teach anyone is think for yourself. You know, Don't let anybody tell you this is how it is. Make up your own mind because they don't know who you are and they don't know what you like. 
people asked me what I thought the record was going to sound like, I said, well, no idea, but if you ask me and put me on the spot, I'll say probably God hates us all in seasons because it's the last thing we did, and that's the last thing Dave did. Oh, no. And somebody interviewed me after the record was done that heard it said, you know, this is what it sounds like to me, and he said the same thing. So I guess that's what you get. This one's pretty big because we haven't done one ourselves in five years. It's almost going to be five years to the day. Um, and with Dave back for the first time in 16 years, you know, it's, it's pretty epic this time. I think, um, you know, kids that always wanted to get a Slayer record with Dave playing on it, but wanted to get a new one, you know, like they got in the band in 95 and never got to go purchase a record that was new that had Dave on it. I think it's going to be really cool for them, like Cult and Conspiracy in particular. The intros of those songs are probably 15 years old. And I just never married it to the right song. And this time, you know, I found the things that made them work. So you've got riffs that are probably 15 years old. You've got riffs that are less than a year old. So you've got a, it's probably going to sound more traditional to some people in some ways because those riffs are that old. And, um, you know, it's going to sound like Modern Slayer with Dave. What about the song Jihad? You guys getting a lot of heat for that? Not yet, but it's coming. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, every time we come up to Canada, the only the only reason we come up here is because the fans are so killer. Because the border just sucks. I hate it. Life on the road for you. Fun. Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath rules. The TV show The Osbournes. The Osbournes made you see the side of Ozzy that no one should have seen. <laughs> what band do you hate? What band do I hate right now? Um, it's so hard because there's so many. Yeah, you know, I'll go with the obvious ones, St. Limp Biscuit. George Bush. Yeah, I don't, I'm not into politics and I don't care, but I know the world thinks he's an idiot. Vegetarians. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Your bandmates. My bandmates are cool. They have a good time. Interviews. Interviews are fun sometimes and pain in the ass sometimes, but today is cool. All right, man. I think that's all I got for you. Thanks a lot. Carrie King.